Hey, welcome to Mooney Reads. My name is Beck, and today I'm going to be talking about my ongoing topical TBR for the history of HIV and AIDS activism within the United States. Rather than just having monthly TBRs, I'm going to be implementing kind of ongoing topical TBRs that don't really have a specific set end date. I'm not going to do this for every single thing that I read, but I think that it's going to be beneficial for me for the specific topics that I know I'm going to be looking a lot at. Now these definitely are not the only books that I'm going to be reading. I'm going to maybe choose a book from this TBR per month um, to read if everything goes well. Of course, some of these books are going to take a little bit longer than that. In this specific list, I'm going to be focusing on um, HIV and AIDS activism within the United States. I studied the LGBT community as a sociologist. Most of what I'm looking at is focused on contemporary language, but I understand the um, need for deep historical context and the HIV and AIDS epidemic was really important for the LGBT community, so I am doing kind of a deep dive into that. Now with this list in particular, it is very white and very cis, and I would like to change that. So if anybody has any recommendations, definitely let me know. I am only looking at books that are kind of focused mostly on the 80s and 90s and within the United States, so this isn't looking globally. Ideally, I would like to look globally eventually, but I'm starting with the U.S. The first section of books that I have on this TBR are fiction books. Um, this is probably the smallest category just because it is heavily focused on nonfiction. The first fiction book that I have is um, a collection of plays by Larry Kramer and that includes The Normal Heart and The Destiny of Me. This kind of focuses on the politics sort of that he encountered, um, kind of looking at the difference between rad radical militant activism and activism that's kind of more palpable for the majority. And of course, amidst all of the different political things, you also have death and grief kind of covering all of it. I've seen The Normal Heart and I really enjoyed it, but I want to go and read it um, and then also read um, The Destiny of Me, which I'm pretty sure is a sequel, or at the very least it plays off of a lot of things that were present in The Normal Heart. This definitely plays on um, Kramer's actual history. He was one of the first voices who really called for more radical militant activism um, in the face of the government's inaction for the HIV and AIDS epidemic. That actual action didn't happen until a little while later. He was initially criticized for it. He was also criticized for other things that he should have been criticized on, like sexism and slut shaming. But eventually the movement as a whole did kind of go more in that more radical direction, at least if you looked at ACT UP and things like that. But I thought that The Normal Heart was a really interesting look um, into different pe people's experiences and also I think in general a lot of what he says can also be applied to other movements too, that kind of struggle between needing radical change but also wanting to be kind of accepted societally. That's something that's ongoing even though this definitely does have uh, that specific historical situation in the AIDS epidemic. So those are Larry Kramer's plays. The next work of fiction that I want to read is another play, or rather it's a set of two plays, um, Angels in America by Tony Kushner. This play focuses on the lives of several characters that are impacted by the AIDS epidemic. Some characters are, b are based on real people, some aren't, um, but it's again kind of a deeper look into how um, the AIDS epidemic just impacted people. The next work of fiction that I would like to look at is The Gifts of the Body by Rebecca Brown. This is a novel that's focused on uh, the experience of a healthcare provider as she's taking care of people who are impacted by HIV and AIDS. Those are the only fiction pieces that I have on this list in the moment. There's another book that I considered putting on here in the fiction section that's a sci-fi book, but the series that it's in is rather large, so I don't think that I'm going to put this on my TBR, but it is going to be sort of on my radar of things to potentially read. Um, I'll put the information about that book in the description because I don't have it right in front of me, but if you're interested in this topic and also in sci-fi, this particular book uses basically something similar to AIDS within their story. And it was one of the first kind of fiction works that really looked at AIDS. It was uh, published in the early 80s. Next I'll be looking at memoirs and other non-fiction kind of autobiographical pieces. First we have when We Rise by Cleve Jones. Cleve Jones was a prominent activist 
Um, at the time, he was one of the primary people who headed the Names Project, and this basically just chronicles his time being within a leadership position in activism. I started reading this a while ago and just never got around to finishing it, so I'm excited to see what it's like. If the name is familiar to you, When We Rise, that may be because there was an ABC fictionalized docudrama that was based on his memoir. Um, it was very good. I would recommend watching it. But I definitely want to read the actual memoir that it was based on. The next memoir that I have is Queer and Loathing by David Feinberg. This book talks about his own experiences being an activist um, and being involved in some of the larger kind of direct action movements. Within it, he also talks about different actions that he thinks people need to follow through with if they want to eradicate AIDS. The end of the book also focuses on the end of his life, so him actually dealing with his own health um, and complications from AIDS before he dies. Another memoir that is on this list is The Gentrification of the Mind by Sarah Shulman. Um, this looks at her experience being in a community that was impacted by the AIDS epidemic um, and what activism sort of looked like there from a personal level. As I was researching and finding books, I did find a number of other memoirs that were focused on um, people's experience, some of them within the movement, but a lot of them that were focused on their kind of end-of-life experience. But for this, I'm definitely more focused on ones where people talk about their position within activist movements, so that's why I've chosen the ones that I have chosen. If you have any ideas of memoirs that I should add, definitely let me know. I'm especially looking for memoirs from trans activists and activists of color. One book that I did consider putting on here was We Both Laughed in Pleasure, which is a collection of diary entries by Lou Sullivan, who was a trans man who had AIDS. And the reason that I didn't put it on here was because I didn't, at least from the description, I didn't see kind of what role he played activist-wise. Plus, it also focuses kind of on his transition as well. So I am putting that on my gay history TBR. But if you're interested in this movement, that's probably a book that you would want to look out for. There's one more book that I have on this part of the list that is informed by personal experience. However, this is a book that it could fit in this category or it could fit in the next category looking at history. But since it was put out by the actual organization that it talks about, I put it in this section. And that is Breaking the Walls of Silence, AIDS and Women in a New York state maximum security prison written by the members of the AIDS counseling and education program. This book talks about the development of ACE and kind of what they had to deal with in order to put it together. They came together because of the conditions for women with AIDS in these prisons and the resources that they lacked different things like that, so I'm really looking forward to reading this one. The next section that I have on this TBR is kind of general nonfiction that involves history, journalism, or medicine. The first book that I have on this part of the TBR is And the Band Played On by Randy Schultz. This is the classic history of the gay movement. Um, Randy Schultz was a journalist. He basically looks at the coverage that people had of HIV and AIDS before discussion of it became more mainstream. And that mainstreaming of that conversation, especially in any sort of positive light, wasn't until a number of years after the pandemic had already killed tens of thousands of people. It wasn't until celebrities started getting sick that they actually paid attention. So Randy Schultz's book looks at, at least from my understanding, how media attention was before then. The next book that I have on this list is another tome, and that is How to Survive a Plague, The Inside Story of How Citizens and Science Tamed AIDS by David France. And this is kind of a look into different grassroots organization and how they impacted HIV and AIDS and how it was treated medically. This is particularly important just because it did change so radically and it needed to change so radically. A lot of people were forgotten on the forefront, really everyone with AIDS was forgotten on the forefront, um, but the little bit of research that was done was only focused on white men, so that left women out of the picture, people of color out of the picture, and also people who were intravenous drug users who were one of the groups that were high risk uh, to get HIV. So this looks like it's going to be kind of a good history and how um, 
activism actually had an impact. Next we have My American History, Lesbian and Gay Life During the Reagan Bush Years by Sarah Shulman. Um, if you'll remember, Sarah Shulman was one of the authors of a memoir that I would also like to read as well. This is a collection of essays that documents activism during the early 90s AIDS epidemic. So you get a good look at where people were activism-wise, but also the political response or non-response that they received. The next book on this list is the first one that I'll be reading. I'm already about a third of the way through it, and that is Moving Politics, Emotion, and ACT UP's Fight Against AIDS. This book specifically looks at ACT UP, which was a group that formed in the late 80s in order to fight HIV and AIDS. It looks at the role that emotion played in the creation of the group and how a lot of activism moved from a more respectful approach um, that tried not to get in the way of norms to kind of a more radical approach that um, ACT UP had. And it basically looks at the role that emotion played in those activist spaces, but also how those activist spaces impacted people's emotions. It's really fantastic so far. If you're interested to know what all is going on at this point, I do talk about it in my Zodiacathon vlog, just because I started this book um, for that readathon. Um, but I do plan on at least making a wrap-up video for this book because it's a really great so far. The next book that I have that I would like to read is After Silence, A History of AIDS Through Its Images by Avram Finkelstein. And like the title said, it looks at a lot of the art from the time and a lot of the symbols that are used. Art became a really large part of the movement, especially um, within ACT UP and different things like that. So that is a very important aspect to look at. The next book that I have in this TBR is The Secret Epidemic, The Story of AIDS and Black America by Jacob Levinson. So this actually looks at AIDS within the Black community, which is really important because a lot of people talk about how HIV and AIDS impacted the gay community, but they don't talk about its effects on people of color. Even though the people who are most at risk today in the United States are black, gay, and bisexual men. So I thought this was really important to have on here. This is one of the few books that I have on here that actually looks at race, and I am definitely trying to find more books to add to this. The next book that I have on this list is Patient Zero in the Making of the AIDS Epidemic, by Richard McKay. In this, Richard McKay asks the question, why are so people focused on this idea of patient zero? Why do we need to know exactly who it came from and where it came from? This wasn't really a focus early on. It wasn't until the 90s that people were more focused on who exactly had it first and where it came from as kind of a primary question. And this book basically looks at why people even started asking that question in the first place. So I'm really interested to see that. I think that this has the potential to tell us a whole lot about stigma and how that's related to HIV and AIDS, and specifically how the stigma was at that particular time. And that leads us really well into Susan Sontag's work. Specifically, I have Illness as a Metaphor and AIDS and its Metaphors, which also looks at stigma and illness. The first section of this doesn't focus on AIDS at all as far as I know, but it is an important precursor. She actually wrote this as a cancer patient, and this is more, like I said, like philosophy, kind of sociology-ish. Definitely disability studies book, but I think this is going to be super important uh, in order to contextualize all the things that were going to be reading about, or that I'm going to be reading about. And the final book that I have on this list is Voices in the Band by Susan Ball. This is part memoir and part medical history. This looks at how the AIDS diagnosis went from being basically a death sentence to actually being something that's manageable. So whereas most of the stuff that I'm looking at is just 80s and 90s, this goes from there to more modern day, which... Um, you know, I am focused more on the later end, but I think this is still going to be an important piece and it still also talks about this end. I also desperately need a book that's at least a little bit happy. So I think that being able to see how it progressed to something that's at least a little bit better will be important. Out of all of these books that I have, I have one book that focuses on African Americans, none that focus on any other people of color, and none that acknowledge trans people. 
these are holes that I'm desperately trying to fill. I have spent probably way too much time trying to research books and figure out what would be best to read. Because something that doesn't get talked about a lot is the fact that people of color are at risk and trans people are at risk. I don't think that that last one is even something that's really acknowledged very well within the United States. Even today, trans people are ignored in a lot of these conversations about HIV and AIDS. They are definitely ignored historically. There are a number of important trans figures who did have HIV and AIDS, and they did a lot of different things for the whole LGBT community throughout the course of their lives. Of course, it's hard to find books about them. It's certainly hard to find a book that focuses on what they did in terms of helping the fight against AIDS. So all that is to say, there is this glaring hole in my reading list. There also appears to be a glaring hole in accessible literature. I will continue to look for things to add uh, that would kind of fill this void, and if anyone has suggestions, definitely let me know in the comments. If you've read any of the books on this list, let me know what you thought about them. And if there are any of these books in particular that you think I should read first, let me know. Thank you all for watching. Bye!